deep knowledge of mathematics, mm. someone whose passion for learning and for teaching. But you've also been keeping a keen eye on some of the extraordinary hurrah around artificial intelligence, oh, yeah. which, you know, you're a fellow Brit, a deep mind. <laughs> that was a lot of that being baked over there in the UK. What do you make of the hype and the reality? I think in a lot of ways, I mean, these large language models have been around for, for quite some time. And I think that uh, this current generation that we have now are a step forward, but I wouldn't say that they're this seismic shift in quite the way that they appear to be in, in public perception. The big difference, of course, is that now the public has access to them in a way that they didn't before. So I think it's really that the public is kind of catching up with where things stand. But I think that with that, with the, the impressiveness of this, this new generation, I think that there is also maybe a sort of false impression that these algorithms are capable of doing things that they're perhaps not quite demonstrating you know for instance I still don't think that we are in a world where any artificial intelligence anywhere has ever demonstrated a conceptual understanding of what it was creating hmm. Hannah, big Wednesday night ahead. We'll get into the details of the show in just a second. But I'm looking across the six episodes, right? And it's not just simply a look at AI. You're looking at, for example, technology and AI within social inclusion. Mm. You go global around the world. Give us some of what we can expect in yeah, the six really... episodes to come. I really wanted this whole series to be about not just technology in and of itself in isolation, but really about the impact of technology on society. So as you say, one of the episodes is about uh, technology for social inclusion, the idea that there are new creations that might be able to help uh, people with disabilities to combat um, the way that some groups end up being uh, marginalised. So we go, there's a, a place around the corner from here um, in Brooklyn where they are building the most beautiful, elegant prosthetic limbs that uh, can be controlled by your mind, essentially. Um, or a, a company in London that are creating these glasses that, that can subtitle conversations as they happen so that people who are deaf or hard of hearing might be able to, uh, to use that kind of technology. But I think it's not just the series, it's not just about listing all the new technologies that are coming, it's really thinking about their impact. Because in that episode, I also uh, go to talk to um, some disability rights campaigners and ask them about how they feel about these new silver bullets and the response really is uh, actually can we just have ramps you know like yes. actually we'd like braille and maybe like a carpet that leads up to the reception desk of buildings it's all very well and good to get excited about these new kind of fangled technologies but really we have the technology already that can really impact on people's lives and we're what we're lacking is the sort of societal will to, to implement it